big news out of Stuttgart for 2017 is that the 911 Cara and Cara S are now turbocharged. That's right, turbos aren't just for 911 turbos anymore. Both the Cara and the Cara S get two turbochargers hitched to a 3.0 litre flat 6 that is smaller in displacement than last year's naturally aspirated engines. Buying a Porsche Turbo is now easier but not easy, you'll still have to get over the Cara's $90,395 point of entry. Turbocharged 911s have existed for 40 years, but putting a turbo in a regular 911 is met with suspicion among fans of the crisp responsive Porsche's naturally aspirated engines. Turbos are for turbos, they'll chant. Confusion will follow, chaos will reign. So, what's the big deal about turbos? After all, turbos gave the Porsche 959 superpowers, put the Lotus Esprit in Bond movies, and made the Buick GNX a blue clad dream machine. Turbos are magical little snail shells of power, but they imbue engines with a different feel and naturally aspirated engines. Turbos need to build pressure to provide power and consequently there can be a bit of a wait for full thrust. Old 911 turbos really made you wait, and then they hit with the subtlety of a three wood. But Porsche has been battling turbo lag and working to smooth out the hit longer than just about anyone else. Perhaps that's why the 3.0-litre twin-turbo engines in the new 911 Cara and Cara S are not only stronger than the larger, non-turbocharged engines they replace, but nearly as responsive. The Cara. The turbochargers make a big difference in the base Cara. Here, the turbocharged 6 makes 370 horsepower at 6,500 revolutions per minute 20 more than before and 331 lbft of torque 44 more from 1,700 to 5,000 revolutions per minute. The turbo engine has mid-range OM that the previous 3.4 litre never had. That engine required big revs to provide meaningful thrust producing just 243 lbft of torque at 3000 revolutions per minute compared with the 331 lbft that the turbo makes at the same engine speed. It's a massive difference. The old engine didn't wake up until a tack needle swung past 4000 revolutions per minute, and peak torque didn't arrive until 5600 revolutions per minute. The turbochargers bring the power much earlier in the rev range, but at low RPM there is a brief spool up before the power arrives. It's not a big delay, just a minor calm before the storm. The push comes quickly and it's a much harder shove than delivered by the old naturally aspirated engines. In lower gears, the engine pulls easily from idle and makes strong boost by 2000 revolutions per minute. By 3000 revolutions per minute, it's a mad dash to the red line, and there's no detectable lag, just thrust. Lug it in 6th or 7th and the boost takes more time to arrive, but we don't recall their naturally aspirated engines pulling with any gusto from low RPM in high gears. Porsche claims 0 to 60 mph times of 4.4 seconds for the 7th speed manual. 4.2 seconds for the PDK automatic, and 4.0 seconds for the PDK automatic with the optional sport chrono package and its launch control function. Those numbers are titans quicker than Porsche's claims for last year's Carrera. In our hands, we hit 60 and 4.2 seconds in the old 3.4 litre manual Carrera. We expect to beat Porsche's numbers by a tenth or two. So, that means that the base 911 Cara might break into the threes and range. Dot. And the Cara S, we're certain that the 420 horsepower Cara S $104,395 will break into the threes and range. Porsche claims 0 to 60 mph times for the Cara S that are 0.2 second quicker than before in each configuration. 
the gap widens even more at higher speeds. In around town blasts, the Kara S is a missile. At a millimeter larger turbo impeller and tweaks to the engine management software are the major differences between the Kara and the Kara S to make the extra power, the S runs more boost. 16.0 pounds per square inch to the car is 13.1. With so much in common, it's not surprising that the S's power is delivered with the same smooth linearity of the car. -er. There's just a whole lot more of it. The tack needle swings even quicker as you pass 3,000 revolutions per minute. The acceleration will flatten your hair against the headrest. Headrest head is now a thing. Bring a comb. Lower the windows and a faint turbo whistle can be heard behind the characteristic raspy zing of the 911's engine. Windows up, the only sound is the growl of the intake, which makes sense, as Porsche pipes in intake noise to enhance the engine sound. The notes aren't manufactured, however, it's actual engine sound channeled into the cabin. A sport exhaust is optional recognizable by the two round pipes in the center of the bumper, and gives the driver the ability to open or close exhaust flaps to further raise the volume. Opt for the Sport Chrono package and, in addition to a snazzy dash-mounted stopwatch, you get active engine mounts that tighten to minimize the effect of a rollicking engine as well as a modder selector dial on a steering wheel. Turning it toggles among individual, normal, sport, and Sport Plus. What the knob changes depends on the optional extras on your car. Switching to Sport or Sport Plus tightens the electronically adjustable shocks. Cars with Sport exhaust get louder in Sport and Sport Plus mode. Manual transmission versions gain automatic rev matching in Sport and Sport Plus. PDK equipped 911s switch to a more aggressive transmission program that automatically downshifts upon hard braking and holds gears longer. Sport Chrono also adds the launch control capability to the PDK automatic. Sport and Sport Plus modes make the engine slightly more reactive by priming the pump through changes in camshaft phasing and retarding the ignition timing. The effect is more exhaust gas blowing over the turbine before boost is called for, which reduces turbo lag. PDK cars with Sport Chrono also get a small black button in the middle of the mode dial called the Sport Response button. Hit it and the car gives you the full busy. The powertrain and the chassis go into their most aggressive modes for 20 seconds of maximum acceleration. Meanwhile, outside the engine room, on the basic Cara and Cara S, the chassis undergoes a number of tuning changes. Electronically adjustable dampers PASM are now standard on the Cara. The shocks have a wider spread of damping than before, the coil springs and anti-roll bars are changed, and the rear wheels are a half inch wider. Cara S models now offer PASM Sport, which further lowers the car and the rear wheel steering from the GT3 and the turbo is now optional. Equipped with all the chassis goodies, the Cara S is a playful car with big grip. The electric power steering offers excellent feedback. There's a GT3 style hangriness to the chassis. The 911 doesn't set a foot wrong, and it's easy to run high speeds with a feeling of safety and control. With Sport Chrono. Porsche's stability control system now offers three modes, full-on, PSM Sport which backs off the point of electronic intervention, and full-off. The brakes also have undergone some changes. Cara models get larger for piston front calipers and wider front rotors. Cara S models get larger and lighter floating front rotors that are set on the aluminium hubs with pins. The pads are larger. Two, and come from the 911 Turbo. Bone up for the $8,520 ceramic bricks and you get the Turbo S's 16.1 inch ceramic rotors and 6 piston calipers in front and 15.4 inch rotors at the rear. In the looks department, there are new headlights, revised front and rear bumpers, 
and restyled taillights. Also, the grill over the engine looks different and feeds the intercooler's air. Inside, the touch screen wakes up to a passing hand and now incorporates Apple CarPlay. The proliferation of turbochargers largely has been driven by fuel economy demands. Turbos aren't the performance symbols they once were, they're now tied to efficiency. The downsizing of the 911's engine likely was done for economy, but we can't say how successful that was, since Porsche hasn't released its official EPA estimates. But, being Porsche, the turbocharger isn't here solely for fuel economy. The turbo is here to increase power, too. And Porsche's careful integration manages to preserve the involving character, sound, and higher revving bliss of the 911 Cara and Cara OS's naturally aspirated predecessors.